Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session on strategies for developing your cyber workforce. My name is Justin Avery, and I'll be your host for this discussion. I could not be more excited to bring this discussion to you today. Uh, in my role as the Director of Business Development for Focal Point Academy, I have conversations every day with cybersecurity leaders who struggle with this topic. And I'm eager to introduce you to our guest today and to begin talking about these strategies for doing it right. Again, I'm Justin Avery with Focal Point Academy. Focal Point Academy has been working uh, in the DOD sector, doing workforce development for SOC assets for over a decade now. We've trained about 16,000 people in cybersecurity for SOC environments, and we're really excited to be bringing this to the commercial sector now. Uh, and in that vein, our guest today is Drew Simonis from Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Drew has been with HPE since early 2014 in a variety of information security roles, and he currently serves as the company's VP and Deputy CISO. Prior to joining HPE, Drew spent more than eight years at Willis Towers Watson, serving as the firm's CISO. He's a respected voice in the information security community, and we're fortunate to have him join us today for this discussion. Welcome, Drew. Thank you. So, Drew, what we're going to talk about today, as you know, is, is cyber workforce development. And Academy, this is a, a, a topic that's near and dear to my heart. Academy has been working in the security workforce development, specifically with SOC assets, for over a decade now. We're really excited to be moving this, as you know, uh, into the commercial sector. Our background is in the intelligence community and the DOD. So we're really excited to talk to people like you about what you care about in this arena and the things that matter to you. So I wanted to have uh, a guided conversation with you about this. Before I get going, is there anything that I missed in your intro or, or did I represent you fairly? No, you represented me wonderfully. I feel quite proud of myself. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. So let's jump right in, Drew. Uh, a couple of things I really want to start with. Your personal philosophy or your, or your corporation's philosophy on how you develop security assets, could you give me some background on how you train them, what you do today, and, and the sort of things that you value when you do this? Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, philosophically, we take an approach that that recognizes that we can't really afford to be in the free agent marketplace. Probably nobody can for the amount of staff that you need to secure an organization of any size or scale today. And that means we have to take an approach which grows our own talent. It's good for us to do that regardless, but uh, the market realities force our hand to a, to a large extent. And so when we look at our security operations center, uh, what we call our cyber defense center, uh, we look at that as the front door to our organization. That's where we take in a lot of our younger talent, our early career talent. And we put those people through a boot camp. We recognize that the skills that we need to secure our enterprise just aren't being produced in the marketplace generally. The universities can give people a good baseline, but it's not really a practical baseline. It doesn't educate them on the specific tools that we use or our specific processes, for example. So it's up to us. And we recognize that we boot camp these people. We put them through a job shadowing type program where they can practice the skills that the boot camp has given them. And, and then once they gain a certification, sort of an internal program that we run to measure our own capabilities, you know, only then are they really allowed to start operating independently on our watch floor. And then from there, you know, we use that talent pool to grow the rest of our organization as well. They're, they're learning all about the whole organization as they deal with incidents and, uh, you know, triaging those, determining the consequences uh, and working them through resolution. And so it gives them a door into the rest of our organization they can pursue. And we really like that. We're really proud when our analysts uh, move into compliance roles or engineering roles or development roles. And we see that happen quite a lot. Yeah, I think, I think that's excellent. When you talk about that onboarding boot camp, I'm assuming that what we talk about is baselining skills for those beginner level people, those entry level people. When you do this sort of boot camp, it's all, um, is it all internal or are you bringing in outside training companies as well? Besides focal point, obviously, for what we're discussing, but is your entire boot camp something that you built? Yes. Uh, so the boot camp is something that's been with us for a while, and, and we built it out of necessity at the time. We didn't know of uh, or there weren't the kind of suppliers available, uh, you know, to produce the sort of partnership that we have with Focal Point. And so it, it, because it is a very uh, it's a very 
unique to us you know it's our practices our policies our procedures are you getting to know the network getting to know the players on the network you know who are the organizational leads who are the people who make things happen down in the trenches uh, it's real hard to go with any third party to produce that kind of training course certainly certainly so when you have these people that you bring in whether they're new or whether they're existing or you bring in a, a free agent how do you figure out who needs what moving forward? What what that next step is? Is it an assessment model you do internally? Is it sort of that self-attestation versus a manager attestation? Or do you use uh, some sort of independent verification? Well, you know, it used to be, it used to be the manager would do the interview and, and do their best to determine if they were being told the truth. And then time would tell and we could see if people really had the skills that they claimed. Uh, we're real excited now that we're working with Vocal Point to be able to put people through a standardized set of skills evaluations and to really get an understanding that's objective and, and, and where the understanding is targeted towards the skills that are necessary for for the job you know so i can be the best java programmer out there but if i don't need java to do my job it doesn't really matter so the the focal point baseline assessment for us has really been a game changer yeah so i, I think you knew where i was going with that absolutely that that assessment model to figure out who people are and who they're not that independent verification you know i know that in our early conversations that was something that really appealed to you and, and we're excited to do that with you and your team as well as you move forward through this i'm curious do you look at the entire team and say everybody gets developed in an ongoing basis how do you decide where to, to put your your time and effort as far as development is it something everybody goes through yearly or is it something that you focus more on on sort of those early level people and you let other people kind of do what they want to do how, how does that work from a kind of high to low perspective for you yeah again so if you look if you look a couple of years ago we we took a what i consider to be a pretty industry standard approach not a good one but a pretty industry standard one which said you know, let's let everybody define their own path. Uh, people will go to training courses. They'll get their CPEs or CEUs or whatever their certification requires. Uh, they'll go to conferences where they'll um, you make friends, learn how to canoe and, and do other things you do at summer camp. Uh, but at the end of the day, it wasn't producing a very effective uh, workforce development program for us. And it wasn't a really good use of our budget. Uh, we found that our budget was being misspent and we were leaving a lot of money on the table because we were allocating money that people weren't taking advantage of because simply they didn't find an interesting conference or event. Uh, so we flipped that bit quite significantly and we have looked to structure a much more a significant percentage of the training. There's always going to be our senior most people who do benefit substantially from the networking and uh, the type of events that conferences uh, provide, but uh, we're pulling that to the very top layer. And for the bulk of our workforce, we're using tools like the skills assessment mm -hmm. to develop career path mapped uh, training plans. And uh, it, it really aligns with our company's culture where our management should be talking to our uh, our employees about their careers, about where they want to go, and about how we're going to work together to get them there. Yeah. Focal Point has given us a really powerful tool to support that conversation. And the baseline skills and training can be built upon with sort of, I'll call it, zoom in type training. You know, if I'm really passionate about investigations, there's a number of additional courses I can take on top of my baseline that will give me that, if it, you know, and, and, and I can really hone my skills and, and master them in a, in a real uh, career enhancing way. Uh, so we're, we're really excited about putting more and more people through structured training uh, because we think it's going to be better for them and it's definitely better for us. Yeah, I think you've touched on a lot there. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to, to really highlight. The program that we're doing with you in partnership of mapping out a development plan, of saying to somebody, this is where you are and this is where you're going. You know, in the absence of that, we hear that a lot in the industry. Uh, there's this sort of, I'm just going to go out and take whatever. And mm -hmm. I think what gets interesting is that when you think about the intelligent design behind any operation center, there is a thought process that goes into that, uh, whether it be a framework or just the methodology of what you built, but rarely, or a lot of organizations struggle with that, that sort of, hey, let's put as much thought into the development of the assets as we did into the development of the operation center itself. And the other thing you touched on there that I think is really interesting, and I'd love it if you could expand on it a little bit, 
is that certification versus a skills development model. Just because somebody says, I have these three letters after my name, doesn't really mean, or at least that we find, it doesn't really mean that they have the skills to slot into whichever slot or position on a framework you're supposed to be in. Could you talk a little bit about how you look at certification versus the sort of let's prove it model of skills development? Yeah, I come at it from a perspective. I'm a pretty good student, and I think a lot of people in technology are. And the industry really caters to us in terms of providing boot camps and other venues where we can quickly learn some knowledge. And then right at the end of that, we're basically cramming to take a test and we can pass that test rather readily. I have like uh, 13 certifications, I think, and many of which I took because they were fun and I was interested and I wanted to learn, but they weren't areas where I actually developed skills that I applied in my career. And, and that's the problem. If you don't take the knowledge that you learn from acquiring the certification and apply it within your job regularly and consistently, then you forget whatever you learned in that compressed boot camp, or even if it wasn't a compressed, even if you studied over a series of weeks or months, if you haven't really demonstrated the skill, the letters are just what they are. And, and you know, there's a whole industry that's been built up around certifications that really benefits from having more people be certified rather than keeping that door narrow so that we have a real credible barometer for skills. And so I, I tend to personally downplay certifications for those reasons. Not that they're not valuable. There are some that are very valuable, and, and, and those tend to have more of a practical component. You know, the RHCE, CCIE type model where you, you have a hand on component that you've got to demonstrate you actually know what the heck you're doing and the kind that uh, are like that are a little more valuable but it's about having the skills it's about being able to show up for work and and use the tools effectively to have the mastery to be able to troubleshoot complex problems uh, and none of that is is guaranteed by a certification absolutely i think philosophically you just hit the nail on the head of of why academy does things the way that we do with the uh, assess who you are today prescribe the right path of education for you and execute that training or that that course in a model that isn't about lecture and then learning to pass a test but more about putting your hands on a keyboard getting into a lab based environment getting your you know rolling your sleeves up getting your hands dirty and actually executing what you learn so that when you get back to your desk you're actually doing something at a higher level and that that's what we believe in you know going back to our first meeting was what I believe resonated with you uh, which we're you know we're thrilled to be applying that with HPE how do your employees feel about this sort of thing? When, when, they, when you talk to them about their development uh, and you put them through this boot camp, what are the types of feedbacks that you get from them about what they're going through, the way they're being developed? Is it something that they would just want to put their hands down and be OJT? Or do they feel when you're dealing with, with your organization, hey, develop me, teach me, I'm hungry for this sort of thing? Yeah, of course. I, I think everybody hears about these um, the youngsters that are coming into the workplace and their their desire to not just gain skills, but understand how those skills are going to help propel their career to a place that they want it to be. And so this really helps us have that conversation. It's a it's a good conversation to have. It's not the kind where we're like, I don't know uh, when you're going to be ready for that. I can tell you exactly when you're going to be ready for that. And, and let's talk about this is your course path to get there. This is your personal path. And we can tell you based on the skills assessment why it is that you need those and why you're going to benefit. They can see that we're investing in helping get them to where they want to be in their career. And so, you know, it's, it's quite an amiable conversation to have when, when you can show people the investment you're making, why that investment's relevant and how it's supporting their personal goals. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I've, I've been in workforce development for about a decade now, and I can tell you what's really exciting for me when I talk to you about this and, and other C-level people in technology today. You know, it used to be that you didn't want to develop people too much because you were afraid they would leave. And I think what, what you get and what HPE clearly understands is that this really is a retention tool. If I develop my people, they're going to want to stay. When you talked about the free agent market earlier, and I love the way you phrased that, is this something that factors into your maintenance of your workforce is that you want to continue to develop them to make them feel like, hey, HPE is the place I want to be because they're going to continue to grow me this way. Is that is that an active part of your workforce management plan? 
it, it is. We think it's a differentiator for now anyway. I think most people will catch on uh, and realize uh, the old joke is imagine if you don't train your staff and they stay. Right. And we don't want to be in that position. Uh, I don't think people want to work in a place that treats them like a sponge to be squeezed and then uh, discarded. We really want to keep pumping knowledge into our people. And, uh, you know, they're going to leave anyway. If people are going to leave because that's just the world we live in. Having a repeatable process is important, but the more we can do to show that we're differentiated, to show that we care about helping people attain their career goals, I think it helps to reduce the probability that people will leave. Um, but I don't worry about it. I I think that um, you know turnover is natural, especially when we're talking early career cyber in the marketplace that we're in, where uh, it's just such a hot market. I, I feel good, in fact, in a way, when people come for my staff because it shows that they see us as a source of differentiated talent. You know, in a sense, in sort of a self-fulfilling way, that's a retention tool that people came here to look for talent because this is where people grow and flourish. They don't naturally do that elsewhere. And you might want to stick around and, and uh, benefit from that for a little while longer. Absolutely. I think that's an excellent point. You know, I love the way that you talk about building that pipeline of your own people. You, you know, there are so many organizations out there that are kind of stuck in that free agent market. Let's just go out and overpay for talent and bring them in without really realizing that what they're doing is setting that precedent that I'm going to hire free agents. So I'm going to lose more people to that because I'm not going to develop them, right? That methodology of I'll just keep hiring people as I need them and never develop my own just leads them to go out somewhere else when they want to get developed. So I, I think it's I always love hearing that people want that methodology of let's develop them, let's figure out what we need to build and then build it ourselves and then retain those people. I think that's that's really exciting. And I love that you use that as a differentiator for you. To switch gears a little bit uh, on this conversation, you know, we are talking about our partnership a little bit. Can you tell me what it was about Academy when we first started talking about this that, you know, I'm sure you get a lot of calls for a lot of people to do different things for your organization from a tech perspective, from whether it's uh, selling you the, the latest hardware, the latest software, or, you know, putting your people through some sort of a class or certification. What was it about Academy, um, going back to when we first started talking to you, that made you say, yeah, I want to take this phone call and talk to these people? Yeah, I, I think there's a few things. Uh, one, the quality of the education was top notch, and that's probably the most important thing. We want to make sure that our people are learning things that are relevant uh, and that will will actually help. I mean, if you learn about Windows 3.1, you're you're not doing so great. Uh, but the customer base that you guys built off of, the nature of the uh, training that you developed for them, and that was really exciting for us to to be able to tap into that knowledge pool. You know, frankly, you guys as a company, the flexibility that you have, the willingness to, to tailor training, to work with us on our own premises, that's really attractive. I think as well, the supporting tools and technology that you guys make available. We talked a lot about the skills assessment, but the the ability to track the skills attainment over time, the quality of the LMS, that was a really nice add-on, right? I mean, it, it's not the core reason that we purchased it, but it was awful nice to have. Yeah. Uh, but when it comes down to it, it was it was the nature of the training, the quality of the training, and the flexibility with how that training could be brought to our staff. That was a, a real slam dunk. No, I, I certainly appreciate that. Those are great points. You know, I think the assessment piece, it's an interesting thing. I sometimes have to remind my team uh, that we're not an assessment company, that ultimately it's about you know, developing the people, but that assessment up front is such a valuable tool for organizations to have because it's such a hard thing to get their arms around their own skills inventory. So I think it's it's not a surprise that that was certainly a piece of it. Does the background that Academy has in the DOD and intelligence community, did that play a role in how you felt about the validity of what we were offering? Yeah, that's what I was getting at when I said the, the sort of the customer base that you guys built on. I was sort of trying to get it, say it without saying it, but it certainly adds not just credibility, but to me, a, a level of richness to the material. Um, that community is dealing with things that, quite frankly, many corporations either don't understand that they're dealing with or, or aren't yet dealing with. And, and so, you know, it, to, to be able to tap into that, to have something that's tailored for a group that is under a much more constant and uh, comprehensive and uh, complex attacks, uh, it's just a really neat set of material to be able to leverage. 
yeah, when those instructors have come out of that environment and they're able uh, to speak to that level to a class, it, it, for us, we talk a lot about our instructors because of where they've been and what they've done and what they've seen. Uh, and the ability to impart that level of expertise, uh, especially when you're talking, as we were really about the baseline groups, about you know, your level one, level two assets who are either newer to their career, maybe three to five to six years in, uh, having access to those sorts of people, we certainly feel uh, is a real differentiator for us. Drew, I want to give you a moment to kind of talk about the exciting things that maybe HPE has going on for your new people as we go down this partnership together. What are the things when, when you're going out to talk to young people, whether they're fresh out of a cybersecurity degree program or maybe just a year or two in, what is it outside of just developing people that, that HPEs bring to the table to them that is probably uh, makes it exciting when they're comparing you to maybe a different job offer they have in this competitive market? Sure. Well, I think one, uh, first and foremost, the nature of our company. We are a leader in uh, Silicon Valley still, even though we're smaller and different than when we started Silicon Valley. I mean, the original garage uh, was uh, was a Hewlett Packard garage uh, building, uh, you know, some sort of oscilloscope type of uh, thing. So, you know, we're an old company, but but we've been in the Silicon Valley since it wasn't the Silicon Valley, and. and and that heritage uh, gives us a lot of um, very interesting history to tap into. We have some of the smartest people around, and they've been with this company for a long time. My team has uh, six or seven people that have been with the company for 35 or 40 years. Uh, it's a place where people can really plant roots and flourish and experience new things and grow their careers. Uh, these people haven't been in the same job for that time. Obviously, they've been moving around. They've been trying new things. They've been uh, experiencing new you know, organizations, and it's a great place to do that. Uh, but it's also a technology company. Company. And, and that's a really interesting place to work in cyber because you do get access to some very cutting edge things and it provides a career path that let's say financial services or healthcare can't provide. We can move out of our cyber domain and into our product space, into our services space, into marketing if you have a desire in that space, into sales. Uh, all is staying around technology and using the expertise that you've developed. So uh, I think those two things are, are real important differentiators uh, for us as a company. I would absolutely agree with you. Well, Drew, those were all the questions that I had for you today. I really want to thank you uh, for taking the time to speak with us. Uh, it's a pleasure to be a partner with HPE and to work with you. And uh, thank you again for your time. We greatly appreciate having you here. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for listening today. I was Justin Avery with Focal Point Academy. Thanks so much for taking the time to listen to us. Bye-bye.